This private board will and already has served as a log of past events for future selves to record and a guide of future events for past selves to follow. I don't know which half of its role has been or will be the most important. Possibly neither is critical since deviation from the course is mostly impossible and reflection on its traversal is completely irrelevant. But I'm typing this anyway, because I'm bored again. And here I was thinking we finished taking orders from voices. We've only swept the imperatives of the dead with those of our future selves, who are also dead. Yes, it seems that way. Oh well, it was an enjoyable reprieve from fatalism while it lasted. I nearly managed to savor it. I think we should refrain from dialogue in this memo, without resorting to bannings or absurd exchanges of self-repudiation. Yeah, I agree. I just thought I'd interject that and go. Okay. We will and have already amassed an army to confront the Black King. An army consisting of our alternate future selves. Each one rerouted from a doomed offshoot of the Alpha timeline. Each given another chance at constructive influence over the ultimate outcome. By the way, if you didn't know already, our future self returning to the past from a doomed timeline will always be slated for imminent destruction herself. It's one of the rules. An unfortunate reality is, this will and has already been a mass suicide mission. Or it would be, and already would have been, if we all weren't already dead. Mobilizing ourselves in such numbers would be required to neutralize the king's psychic attacks. It would take our combined concentration to dampen the abilities he inherited from Gulop Gulop, without the cumulative effort of our doomed reserves. Without the heightened mental and physical endurance of our robotic vessels. Without in time the demise we all shared before this began. Victory would not be possible. He would kill us all with one dreadful sound. I don't know if it was just bad luck. Or an extension of the cursed car cadences he brought upon us. That led to incidental and fortress prototyping of Fefere's powerful loses without which the battle will oppose little challenge. I think it was more likely as another inevitability, a product of collusion between the disparate forces at play, a bargain struck between what Skya knows already and what the gods demand up front. Together they orchestrate trials sufficient to ensure that in overcoming them we will be proven worthy of inheriting the ultimate reward. Ripped. Oops. And so it will be, and so it has been already, that while distracted by the combined efforts of our doomed legion, the king would be aggressed by the others. And even though each would be well prepared, perched on the highest rungs of their echo ladders, equipped with the best weaponry Chris could build, versed in the deadliest frame out his boon dollars could buy, even though the meteors from the king's own reckoning would be turned against him, and even with one impossibly lucky roll of the dice at the final moment, we would only narrowly succeed. But ultimately, we would prove our worth. And the reward would be within our reach. But only momentarily, before we would be able to claim it, we would be interrupted by something which would be ushered into our session by a rift in Paradox Space. A rift which we will determine will be opened by four members of a fledgling species, who will be playing in another session of the same game that we will and have already played. Their rift will lead to the great undoing, without necessarily causing it. Not directly. Such rifts are themselves supposedly benign, useful even. They are catalogued phenomena within the game itself, with the provided means of creating them, and a wide range of scenarios for which it might be prudent to do so. The Insisphere locals have more formal terms for them. They typically refer to such a rift as... a scratch. The direct effects of a scratch are limited to the session invoking it. We would not experience or observe those effects from our session but we would experience the consequences in the form of that which prevented us from claiming our reward. 
he whose hand would be forced by the scratch to emerge from hiding. But there would be no adequate way to prepare, even with all the foresight of our disposal, for a foe more powerful than a king we will and have already defeated, for a demon who is indestructible, omnipotent, and enraged. While the rest of the party would abscond, our duplicates would buy us time. They would all be killed. Again. All except for me. This is his as well, I suppose. What would we even do with all those copies anyway? We would return to the site of our hatching, so to speak, where we would hide amidst the veil depleted by the reckoning, and wait, drifting into the wide orbit of our soon-to-be null session. Banished from a universe we left behind. And yet, in being denied the ultimate reward, we would be barred from entry into the universe we created.